Welcome to part three of my SCX 60 CF build. And today I have my steering servo parts and the, uh, the steering parts arrive. So, and it's really great. I got these parts on eBay. Uh, you could actually get some pretty good deals if you shop around on eBay. Uh, if you were to price all these components out at an online store, if you go to like a lo local hobby store, the the steering components separately are probably would run you between forty to sixty dollars. And the steering components I'm using for this parts are actually the uh, factory team parts. And also I'm going to just check the fitment of my custom front shock tower created by Speedy Dad and just making sure that these parts fit. And it's a beautiful fit. Everything looks awesome and I love my front tower. Check that out. This is going to be like a fun build. Alright. So just so you know, uh, the reason why I chose the factory team part of the uh, steering portion is that the the factory team part actually has uh, ball bearings if you're running in like a RTR part you're actually using brushing so um, the difference between those two parts are or that the stock parts uh, stock RTR kits run with a brushing and and the brushing is really not that great for steering you you actually uh, feel that you can actually feel that there's less control with brushings uh, if you have ball bearings, you feel like the steering is much smoother and you're in much more control of your uh, RC car. So that is the reason why I really enjoy uh, the factory team stuff. And just so you know, you need to be patient when you're bidding on parts on eBay. Uh, there's a lot of other bidders, and they run up the price, and and then uh, you're stuck. Uh, you're stuck a few days just bidding on on parts. So uh, here I am installing the, the washers. Uh, the factory team parts actually have these uh, blue aluminum parts. And they're pretty cool. Uh, I love the look of the blue aluminum. Uh, some people don't like it, but uh, uh, if you don't like it, you always substitute it with the uh, stock RTR part. Um, I'm just go ahead and just do a fitment thing. So uh, you actually, the instruction manual actually tells you to uh, thread uh, thread this a little bit so you're doing like this little screw and you're thinking like hey you know this is the first step and then uh, you actually you're actually threading to make sure that the parts fit and then you take it apart again to a, as you're building it so it's kind of a feels like kind of like a backward step really like you're you're doing this part just to making sure that everything threads in through and then uh, then you pull it out again uh, later on so uh, once again here I am I'm using the stock RTR tool that came with my RTR kit um, not really liking this tool so much but uh, if you could I strongly suggest getting some uh, nut drivers with this kit so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out alright so now I'm just gonna go ahead and thread that all way in and then uh, thread in that top part in. There we go. And let's see. I'm going to just check the manual here. Um, I recommend uh, if you don't have the manual, go online and download the uh, PDF manual. Uh, Team Associates really awesome. They have all their manuals on PDF format. And you could also compare like uh, what is the uh, front steering portion of of your electric versus gas powered or factory team versus RTR so uh, it's always fun to go up there and compare and just check the kits on there alright so here I am just there's a lot of parts in this bag so I'm just looking through here to make sure that I have everything and also uh, you need to be organized too so sometimes you're going to see me in a uh, state of disorganization as I'm reading through the manual and and building it out but here I am I'm un unscrewing that part because it's uh, reading through the manual uh, it actually instructs you to unscrew this part because you're threading it through and then uh, you have to unscrew that alright let me go through this part here and 
install the <laughs> install the uh, servo here or uh, servo not servo horn but the uh, um, the servo saver part I should say uh, is where it's where I'm putting this piece here and pretty much uh, you're going to need the uh, instruction manual says to use uh, black grease to uh, put this stuff on together. If you read through the form, some some drivers would tell you not to uh, use the black grease. Um, it's really just a little thing that's subject to debate. Uh, I'm not sure what is going to be correct. So on my build, I'm going to use I'm going to use the uh, black grease. Um, black grease is great uh, to do this. Uh, also, I uh, read recently that uh, you could actually really use like car grease as well too. Uh, uh, when you buy black grease in these RC kits and stuff, they charge two to three bucks for like a little uh, little grease. But on your uh, car kits, uh, if you actually go and go to like a real auto shop, they actually have grease, and it's only like two bucks for like say like half a gallon of like grease. So. Just want to let you know that, uh, but I'm gonna stick to the the uh, black grease I currently have. I have a couple tubes of black grease, so I'm just gonna finish using that up before I try anything automotive. And making sure that the uh, servo saver, the second part of that component, is fitting, and looks like it's fitting pretty nicely. And I'm just gonna grab my washer. Uh, below, I'm using a magnetic. Uh, pit mat uh, hex deck uh, so that uh, I don't lose my parts. I'm kind of clumsy when I open my bag so all my parts actually spill out everywhere so uh, just so you know make sure that uh, you have the parts in there nice and good and I'm actually going to compress the spring a few times just a little bit to make, make it a little bit easier for me to put the spring in and here we go now that I have the servo saber horn here, I'm just, or not servo saber horn, but servo saber screw, I'm um, just apply a little pressure, make sure that I can get this piece in. And it's a little bit tricky. Um, sorry about this. I'm out of frame for for a little bit to make sure I get that alignment correctly. You actually want this to go uh, just flush with it, so. And so you just screw straight down. You don't want to have any kind of angles here. So just taking my time, just making sure that this point could go down just correctly here. And it's a little difficult, admittedly. It's uh, it's not exactly easy getting this part of the pieces on here. All right, let's get this tighter here. And you don't want to over tighten, but you just want to make sure it's it's uh, tight enough. And I'm going to put my uh, uh, ball stud on here. And this is actually where it, where it's going to the servo is actually going to hook up to this ball stud, and uh, there's going to be like a like another linkage when you when you put in your electronics in your your uh, car here. And I'm just going to go ahead and screw in this, this ball stud here. And uh, make sure you just don't, once again, you don't over tighten it. Make sure it is tight, but uh, make sure that it's not exactly like over tight. But just, you know, just a fine line. You don't want to like uh, strip this part. And they include like a little dust cap. So, and uh, what's kind of funny, you have like bags within bags in your kit. So make sure I get the dust cap on here. Oops. <laughs> it's, uh, it actually. It's not exactly easy putting on the dust cap sometimes. There we go. It's on there. And that part is looking good. All right. Next is uh, we have more ball caps, uh, more dust caps, more bags within bags. It's kind of funny. Uh, I'm going to pull these things out. Next part is going to be the uh, steering component. So uh, these are screws for that steering side of things. And just need to make sure that this is going to be going good. And, and it's kind of easy as you're building this thing to, to get mixed up because the steering part is kind of complicated. You have uh, asymmetrical shapes, shapes that 
are different sizes. They don't seem to line up. Uh, most of the time when you're putting in uh, pieces for your cars, the left and right sides look exactly the same. But in the steering part of it, you have, uh, you have one piece that's longer, one piece that's shorter. Uh, you have a bolt that's longer, and you have another bolt that's shorter. So uh, just want you to know that that uh, this this piece that I'm working on is symmetrical, but uh, the next few pieces that you're working on are not going to be symmetrical. Uh, and then it it uh, it's just because it's uh, it's that uh, one side of steering. But weight wise, thankfully, weight wise, both sides are equally balanced. So uh, just so you know. All right, so I'm just getting in the uh, ball stud in here. And I keep dropping the ball stud, but uh, once again, the magnetic hex deck makes sure that that uh, when I drop these pieces, they they tend to stay in one place. Uh, they don't fall out of place. If you don't have uh, money for a hex deck, I really recommend uh, building on top of a towel. For example, like some of these pit maps, you could have a, a towel, and it really a towel would actually stop the uh, screws and washers from flying all over the place. So. Uh, if you don't have anything magnetic uh, or a magnetic bin, or you could use paper plates, a towel, or something, something that organizes your parts and and keeps things from spilling all over the place. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and and uh, put in some more dust caps over it. And it's a. Uh, it is really funny. It's just the dust cap is. It feels like a foamy rubber band, and and uh, it's it's kind of a uh, clumsy. So I'm kind of a clumsy guy. So uh, it's it's kind of difficult for me to get that. And it's and the part is so small too. It's it's kind of hard to get it right on there. But uh, it's nice to have it. So you protect the ball stud and uh, provides like a little cushion as well too for the uh, for the servo. There we go. We got those two pieces on there. Uh, we have more screws and trying to make sure that these pieces are going in correctly. Let's get these screws out here. And just got to thread this one through. These are not the uh, the uh, just so you know that these are the symmetrical pieces here still and these are going to be for that linkage part so it's going to uh when when you turn it it's going to it's going to link left and right so uh just need to put this down here and try to get that to line a little bit better there we go just uh uh bear with me for a second I'm going to pull out the other other screws in here and a lot of times when you try to get things to fit, sometimes they, they just kind of jiggle or wiggle around or they fall out of place. Uh, you just need to be a little bit patient. Uh, take your time. Uh, take plenty of breaks in between, too. Uh, sometimes you get really frustrated, and and uh, I, would, I would say take a quick break. Come back to it. So uh, even breaks do wonders for this, for this build, too. But uh, if you find that you're you're trying to put two pieces together and then things constantly fall apart, or or it, it, things just aren't fitting, just uh, take a quick break and and you're gonna feel much better. All right, so getting that steering linkage in, and it's admittedly it's taking a little bit, but once again, just focus on the craftsmanship of your of your build. Take your time. Uh, be patient. And apologize, I'm a little bit out of frame. I'm just making sure that the the steering linkage is lining up. Uh, with plastic parts, it's kind of easy to thread things together and then have parts uh, not be flush and line up at angles. And and uh, the servos, one of those components where, where uh, and it's the steering servo is actually one of those components where you want to make sure that things are lining up correctly, and you're not uh, you're you're not uh, getting these these out of the way. So, uh, just so you know, uh, essentially this part uh, of the steering build is going to be like any steering build in your SC10. So, even though this is a conversion kit, 
uh, the steering system is going to be the same as your stock truck or factory team truck or uh, SE10 or S truck or GT truck for example. So if you really know how to do that, it, this part is going to be the same. So here we go, just screwing in this part in here, and then we could move on to some some of those asymmetrical pieces here. So I'm just making sure that I get this part screwed in, and there we go. That part is is fitting. So. Um, want to make sure there's some there's some play in here uh, play would be that it it just moves freely uh, I don't want it to be like just so loose that uh, it doesn't move freely but I just want to make sure that it does have enough play in there all right so I'm gonna put a, a, a uh, the ball bearings and the washers in here so uh, once again I don't have <laughs> uh, it's kind of there we go um, making sure that that part um, there's some uh, there's some uh, uh, flash in there so uh, just making sure I'm clearing off some of the flash I'm mean, actually using my uh, stock RTR uh, hex, hex allen wrench to kind of clean this out uh, trying to just kind of sand it down if you will I can't really use uh, sandpaper it's just the part area is too small but uh uh, these are actually where the ball bearings go, and I found that on my kit, uh, my parts that the, the parts weren't pieces weren't fitting in flush because there's too much uh, flash in there. So I've got the the parts in there, uh, the ball bearings in there. So then uh, in your stock RTR truck, you would have a brushings here instead. And I would, if you do have brushings in there, I would highly recommend uh, purchasing ball bearings for for this part. Uh, ball, uh, the ball bearings will be a nice and simple upgrade. Here I'm just going to screw in this little bit. Uh, I, I think I over tightened it actually, so I'm just going to un unscrew this a little bit so that it's it. I don't over tighten this part. So it's just a little adjustment I'm making. Alright, so now I'm going to screw in. This is actually a, a uh, long screw. So I'm screwing in the, the longer part of the screw in here so that this would fit. Uh, you're going to have a long screw, you're going to have a short screw. So just making sure that that part fits and then making sure that my steering silver servo still has enough play. There we go. Liking the play in here. Um, I want it loose. I don't want it like too loose though. So it's kind of like a little fine line uh, in there, and then uh, you could you could adjust the the tension on there too. So as you're as you're screwing it in, so I'm just adjusting the uh, the play on here. There we go. Liking the liking the way it's going, and not digging the other side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do a slight adjustment. Uh, you want to get this part right and you want to make sure that this part is all set up before you continue with the other parts uh, because of the position where you're in it, where this part's going to end up. It's going to end up in that front area and everything else kind of wraps around it and locks it down. So uh, just make sure you're, you're happy with, with this part. There we are. We have the uh, steering